Today we're going to analyze the convergence or divergence of a pretty interesting looking infinite series. So let's see what we got. We want to look at the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus the square root of 2 plus the third root of 3 plus the fourth root of 4 all the way up to the nth root of n. So we've got this nice little partial sum in the denominator. Okay, well, how could we get started with this? Well, maybe the first thing to think about since we're letting n go from 1 to infinity is what's the end behavior of the nth root of n. So in other words, we'd like to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n. Obviously, if we find the value of this, that doesn't necessarily tell us if this converges or diverges, but it gives us maybe some sort of idea for a plan of attack. So how am I going to analyze this? Well, maybe I'll first start by rewriting it as the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the 1 over n, and then recognize that this is an indeterminate form of type infinity to the 0, because as n approaches infinity, 1 over n is approaching 0. And generally, those types of indeterminate forms um, are usefully solved with L'Hopital's rule. And maybe we could apply L'Hopital's rule to this like after a little bit of manipulation, but in I when I teach classes that go over material like this, I like to make a concerted effort to talk about the difference between a discrete variable and a continuous variable. So here in, because, because of the setting over here is a discrete variable, only the natural numbers, whereas x is generally thought to be as a continuous variable, the real numbers. But we know that if the limit of a sequence or if the nth term of a sequence is defined by a function evaluated at n, then they have the same infinite limit. So that means I can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 over x. Now, really, there's no big deal in doing everything in terms of n, but I like doing this change of notation just for the connotative reasons. Okay, so now what can we do from here? Well, maybe let's exponentiate and take the logarithm at the same time. So e and ln, or e to the x and the ln of x, are inverse functions of each other. So if I apply e to the ln of this, well, we get the same thing. So in other words, I've got something like this. We have e to the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of x to the 1 by x. So we have something like that. Here we use the fact that the natural log is a continuous function to bring the limit inside the net or the natural log inside the limit. Okay, so anyway, what do we have now? So this is going to be e to the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x over x. So that's just from logarithm rules. And now we can see that this exponentiated limit is of type infinity over infinity. The natural log is one of the smaller objects that approaches infinity as its argument approaches infinity. So since it's type infinity over infinity, we can use L'Hopital's rule in order to simplify it. So that's going to give us e to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x over 1 just by taking derivatives. But as x goes to infinity, 1 over x goes to 0. So this gives us e to the 0, which is equal to 1. OK. So what does this mean if the limit is equal to 1? Well, that means something like this. So for n, maybe I'll just say in quotes, big enough, we have let's see, that nth root of n is approximately equal to 1. But being approximately equal to 1, that means it can be bounded within an interval that's centered at 1. So maybe that would be the interval of length 1, just to keep it really, really loose. So we have 0 is strictly less than the nth root of n, because this thing is always positive, which is less than 2. So if something's approximately equal to 1, like I said, what we mean by that is this thing is able to be bounded in some sort of open circle around 1. Okay, but this actually seems like it could be very, very helpful. Maybe let's uh, 
snatch onto this square boxed object and see if we can prove something like this in general. So I'll put a little star here and that'll be our next goal to prove that inequality. So in the last board, we did some like exploratory calculation that led us to writing down the following, following statement, which I've now called a lemma and we will prove. And it says for all n, which are natural numbers, the nth root of n is between 0 and 2. So the fact that it's always positive is pretty clear. So let's show that it's going to be less than 2, and we'll do that by induction. So our base case will be the n equals 1 case. But what's the first root of 1? Well, that's kind of a silly way of just writing the number 1, which is definitely less than 2. If you'd like maybe a more substantial base case, you could look at n equals 2. The square root of 2 is clearly less than 2. There are a number of ways to show that. Okay, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be for some, let's say, k bigger than or equal to 1, we have the kth root of k is less than 2. And now we're going to somehow try to build this until we have the k plus first root of k plus 1 is less than 2. But maybe the first thing we'd like to do is exponentiate so we no longer have a crazy root. And that'll give us something like this. We have k is less than 2 to the k. But now we can multiply both sides by 2, and that'll give us 2 times k is less than 2 to the k plus 1. Okay. But the cool thing about this is we can sneak a k plus 1 to the left of 2 times k. So we have k plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times k. Well, it's only equal one time. Maybe post in the comments what that one time is, which is less than 2 to the k plus 1. We can forget about the middle right there, and we have k plus 1 is less than 2 to the k plus 1. And then taking the root of both sides, we get the k plus first root of k plus 1 is less than 2, which is exactly what we needed to finish the proof of this lemma. Okay, now that we've taken care of this, we're ready to jump into our main goal and to answer the question for once and all, does this series converge or diverge? So we just got done showing that the nth root of m is less than two for all natural numbers m. I've changed the notation a little bit because we have our index of n here. And so we wanna replace all of these, not just the top term. So I don't wanna overuse n. So now we'll take every term in the denominator right here and replace them all with 2. But that's replacing them all with something larger. But since they're in the denominator, that means we're going to end up with something smaller. So that means our kind of goal object will be larger than the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 plus 2 all the way up plus 2. And how many 2s do we have here? We have exactly n 2s because we've replaced all of these with 2. But now let's notice that's the same thing as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 times n, but that clearly diverges because that's just 1 half the harmonic series. So this is 1 half the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which, like I said, diverges as it is like the famous harmonic series. But our kind of goal object over here is larger than this thing that diverges, so that means it must diverge as well. And that's a good place to stop.